Hello and welcome to episode 15 of the Perfect Tower 2. Today we'll look at the museum and at the end of the video we're gonna tear up to MT7. Next video will be about the shipyard and will be done for every single building. Right now I'm doing a run to test how far am I able to get and also to make as much money as possible. And I'm gonna reach 12 billion. I was really happy to reach this at MT6 and I was curious how far I'm gonna get at MT7 and also what is the requirement. We'll see that at the end of the video. Not how far I'll get but what's the requirement to clear MT7. We're gonna go back to town and look at this XP, a lot of levels. I'm gonna spend that on perks of course and uh, once again, I think it's Buddy Boy who gave me another piece of advice on how to spend my perks. Let's get in there first. So he told me resource drops, power stones and town assets should be upgraded all to the same level. Because one day resource drops will matter again. Right now they don't, it's all about producers. But if apparently in later empty military tiers resource drop will matter again so I'm taking his word for it and following his advice but I'll still upgrade other things such as damage and other things. Here I'm preparing to do a trading session. I want to show you that I'm still making progress in terms of uh, crates. I'm at 302.9 million. I'm gonna do a session here about 60% of everything I got for each and let's see how far it gets me. 528 million. So I almost, well close enough to double my production, the power of my producers and I'm working on shipment bonuses so I can get even more trades every time I do trades. Um, and also my health went up. I really feel like the trading post is OP and I love it and I hope they never nerf it. Maybe it was already nerfed before. I saw something about nerfing, but anyways. So here the game is a little bit bugged up because there should be sound. And I was surprised there was no sound. You're gonna see me check, see? But there's no sound, so I'm gonna have to reset the game. I'll do one or two things before I reset the game. So I did a push here just to make some more money and more XP. I believe I'm gonna spend my perks here on damage. If I remember correctly, yeah. Is it? Yes. Total damage. Then we'll take a first look at the museum. Very quick, but then I'll reset the game so we can have sound. It's uh, exotic skills, offshore markets, higher tier power stones. So this offshore market is extremely powerful and uh, you're gonna see why. Um, Maybe a bit now, but more next episode. Here, the statistics, you have certain objectives. Once you reach those objectives, it unlocks slots for power stones. But look at that, I'm gonna have to reach 100,000 in perfect space. And I reached 60,000. When I ran out of time, I'm gonna have to watch a video or something. Um, so I'm gonna have to complete challenges and do other things to have more slots for power stones, which is important. As you can see, there's many, many to unlock artifacts i decided to check the uh, the help and this page is under construction wow that's really great thank you <laughs> metal plate i know the game is under construction that's fine metal plating is a module that has to do with electricity or something and that cube enables me to transmute colored colored stone into universal here i see a little logo for achievements for hints, so I start clicking on that, hoping to get an achievement, but all the achievement give you is a better conversion rate for all I know. And I might look up on how to get each of the achievements or check out on the Discord. Okay, my focus will be fire. Here I'm just trying to discover how this thing works. I'm gonna show you once again my first experimentation with the building, my very, very basic understanding of it that I will acquire over time. For the next episode, we're going to take a look at museum, laboratory, and the trading post. And you're going to see the museum 
giving me a lot more DPS. Then I'm gonna focus on fire, I'm gonna get four digit percentage increase of power just for fire, but I'm gonna touch on each element. Okay. So right now I'm just uh, experimenting a little bit. 7.9% is really low. Um, so I'm going to use the power stone shop, but only in this episode. The key is really the offshore market. This is where you get very fantastic offers. What an amazing exotic exotic uh, ability to buy. This is the key. Um, you can also get universal stones without having to transmute. I'm going to show you the transmute process for those who don't know about it, but I don't think I'll ever use it because of the offshore market. Okay. So what I'm preparing myself to do, I'm going to have to turn off fill inventory. I'm going to buy one of each color and transmute all of those stones into one universal stone. I'll do it only once, but I even buy one <laughs> universal stone. But once again, offshore market is the key for that. But if you don't have the exotic gems to do it, you need to transmute, you have to. That's why you need to do bosses. You need to visit the uh, Statue of Cuba, do bosses, get those exotic gems and go in the maybe in the mine, you know, and get exotic gems there also to make sure that you can buy this amazing upgrade. So that's my first transmute and that's how you get those that would take forever. However, if you put, let's say, tier 5, all tier 5 of all color, you're going to get a tier 5 universal at least. So this episode, once again, is the only time I'm going to use a normal shop. We made a little bit of progress here, nothing spectacular. So those tier 6 each give 9%. Not very impressive compared to the number I was talking about in the four digits that you're gonna see next episode. So this is a sequence where I'm gonna go tier seven. So it's all about patience. The more patient you are, the higher things are gonna get. We made some progress here. Max crafted tier is the maximum that the offshore market will give you. And you can go highest tier in the bottom spending cubes. Um, so this is the maximum the offshore market will give you if you already crafted it. So my highest tier is 20. If I crafted at least 20, I could get up to up to 20 right off the bat. Here in the power plant, by the way, uh, the, all the empty spaces, I decided to put blue batteries. I don't have enough uh, money to put uh, more yellow batteries. They're too expensive. But here I want to use a time boost on the museum because I need a new offshore market offer. And I want to accelerate things. That's why I'm going to do that. And I'm going to simply show that the time goes by faster or something like that. See, the seconds go by faster. And now higher tier, I went up to 21. There you go. We got a new offer. And you see that my max crafted tier, I made some progress. So the highest I can get from the market is 7666668, right? because nothing is above 21. So these light, these light power stones that they offer me, I'm gonna take the opportunity to make nice upgrades. Let's buy a bunch of tier six and combine them. And it's very easy to, here I'm pointing that it shows C. Now I'm at nine already and I'm gonna to go to 10 and I could, I could sit there for hours and because it's very cheap compared to how much money I have anyways. But of course, uh, later on when you get very high at zero levels, let's say they give you 20, 21 stones, they become very expensive. But it's okay because I'm getting richer and richer anyway, so it doesn't matter. Really, Museum will make my DPS so much stronger. It will be key for MT7. These are the skill tree. This is the skill tree, sorry. 
for the museum. You can read on your own what each mean. And that would be it for the museum. But like I said, next episode, I'm going to show you a fully filled grid. All the progress I've made over time off screen. Now it's time to sear up to MT7. I was really curious to see what they want of you to reach MT8. Let's check it out. First thing I'm looking at is software. So all the software I can make now, we'll do that next episode. And here I need to reach wave 100 billion. So I reached 12 billion in MT6. So I was not, I know it's an simulated number, but for some reason I was pretty confident that I would be able to reach 100 billion if I reached 12 billion so easily in MT6. Uh, so I was confident I would be able to reach it. So this is just a fast forward to uh, my very first run. So I can get, oh, there's corruption here, sorry about that. So I can get to this uh, idle screen that I always use for the conclusion. We're in insane here for underground. And our first run, we're gonna reach wave 420,000. So next episode will be the shipyard. We'll look at MT7. Do you think I'm gonna reach wave 100 billion? Well, you'll have to see next episode. And once again, we'll look at the laboratory, the museum, the trading post, all the progress we've made. You'll be impressed with laboratory uh, compared to last episode that I was talking about it, how much progress I made in it. And it's going to be a key in improving DPS. That's what I need to do. Like I said in previous episode, my survivability is really, really high and I need more DPS and the laboratory and museum will help me. I also receive advice on other tricks to make more DPS, but I more or less understood it, so I'll read more about it and next episode we'll talk about that also. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit thumbs up and leave a comment below. If you want to support this channel, you can subscribe and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss future videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.